Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. Just a, just like an hour ago, I got access to GitHub Code Spaces, and it's in beta. And uh, I got access to that. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how it looks like. So I'm totally blown away by, the, by this and this feature. And I've always loved coding in the browser because I I don't want to have a laptop with uh, very high specifications. So what is code spaces? Let's take a look at that. So as you can see in the background, this is the code spaces page that we have. And um, it's an instant development environment, it says there. So you can get the full Visual Studio Code experience without leaving GitHub. And right now, people uh, who have applied for early access are getting it. So I got it. And um, the best way to look at it would be to uh, just um, try it, right? So here is one of the repositories that I have. And uh, to start code spaces in this repo, what I do is I just click on code and click on open with code spaces. So you can see that shows no active code spaces. So uh, what do we do? We create, we click on new code space. So now it's opening a code space environment for me. And this step is going to take maybe a couple of minutes. So let's wait. So you can see like it has opened a visual studio code for me and everything is happening inside a web browser. It's so, so awesome. And uh, now it has opened my repository and I can do whatever I want here. So let's see, let's see what features does it have. Uh, let me increase the size a bit. Okay, so I think this is quite good. And now it looks like one of my videos, right? So I've always been coding in the browser. So it now it's configuring my workspace so we can see some progress logs if we want. Uh, basically, it doesn't show me anything there. And let me remove the theme. So this is the original theme that you have. That's the Visual Studio white theme. And you can go to uh, menu and change the theme there. No, sorry, it's in the settings and change the color theme there. So you have, you have many different color themes to choose from. I like the dark one. So I'm just going to take the Visual Studio dark theme. And now it's going to set up the theme for me. So it seems like it's not setting up the theme for me because it's still configuring. So I would I would wait for some time so that it finishes all the configurations and then we will set up the theme first. Theme is the most important thing, right? Well, I think it has done its processing and setting up. So we go to, let me increase the size of this again for you so that you can see properly. And uh, we go to these settings and then color theme and choose dark. And that's so, so seems nice, right? So it's like my coding environment now. And uh, you, you can click on any file, like you have the requirements, the setup.py, you, you, it's, it's just the whole environment, the Python environment. And you can see that it creates this Python env 3.8, right? So just be careful of that. You have to include it in git ignore. Otherwise, when you commit, it's going to uh, add this to your uh, git repository and you don't want to do that. Other than that, let's see what else do we have. We have extensions. So some of the extensions are pre-installed and uh, we can probably add Python to it. So it seems like Python is there and it requires a reload. So let's reload. Okay, so that didn't take much time, which is good. And yeah, it's some sometimes it's loading stuff, but when, when it has finished loading, everything works really fast. I've already tried it. So now it has Python, so it should be, it should give me some environment here. So let's see the files that we have. Okay. So now it tells me, okay, I can change the Python interpreter. 
so you have the python so it seems like the python extension is loading and uh, yeah it tells you that you they have found a python environment also so which is nice um okay i will click on yes okay and uh, this one i'm just closing so now it's also telling me that i can install pylint so let's install pylint um okay so now it has this python 3.8 environment python and 3.8 so so now we are in this environment and uh, let's select the python interpreter 383 okay um okay maybe i didn't install it in this environment so let me install pylint again okay so i have pylint and now uh, i can install the other things right so I'm not going to install a lot of uh, libraries in this one. I'm just going to show you like uh, things are working here. So you can go and play around with code spaces when you have access to it. So I can just do pip install tqdm and it installed tqdm for me. And now uh, I have it here. And so let's see, let's go to data loaders, image classification and here i'm not using i'm not using tqdm in this one okay maybe i can search for it so search function also works fine so uh, you see like i i have uh, tqdm here so now i can probably click on uh, control click on a tqdm where i'm using it and so find also works perfectly fine and now it will show me the suggestions so because i have installed tqdm so let's see so i can click on tqdm and it should take me there so it's taking a little bit of time it's not taking me there let's see if uh, i type something it does it suggest me anything no it's not suggesting me anything that's not very good yeah so like uh, if i'm writing len so if i have a function so it's suggesting me but it was taking me to tqdm before i don't know why it's not working now but anyways it will work oh yeah now it works so uh, you can install any kind of libraries you want so this will be your code spaces then you can turn it off and you if you have if you're using visual studio code locally you can also connect to this code space here and one more cool thing that i like is this live share feature so let's see if the live share works uh let me change the size a little bit okay so here you can see like now i can start collaboration so i can just click on this and it will start a live sharing session so it has started a live sharing session and then i can add the contributors to this repository uh, or i can invite someone okay i can just have a, a session which is read only so if i click on invite session and it tells me that invite link has been copied to clipboard so let me open another browser and let's see what happens here so it will it you you can open it using vs code also um, so when you open it in another browser that you cannot see right now it has opened another session for me so where where you can sign in or where you can uh join as a guest so now here it says that uh abi2 anonymous and read only that's me from another browser i have asked to join so i accept it and now i can see this new user here and the other user can also the other user can see what i'm doing so it's it's super cool for sharing code 
it's super easy uh, like collaborating doing some kind of pair programming and I, you, I can also remove the user and go back to my files one more cool thing is whatever changes you make uh, you can always use the git commands so that's that's very nice so i can make all the changes i want in this environment i can modify this environment as much as i want and it's always going to be there so i know that you maybe you cannot train deep learning models in this environment and i don't i don't know if you can connect an external machine to uh, this environment so that it uses the resources from that machine i don't know if the feature is there yet but maybe hopefully soon in the future um so that's it for today's video i hope you like it and uh let me know how you find code spaces if you already have access to it um in in the comments box and tell me uh, about new videos that you want to see in future and see you bye